All right, welcome back, guys, to the stream. Uh, we have with us uh, Chives and Allrun again from Blue Pikachu. Say hi, guys. Hello. Uh, so for those who are new to the stream, this is uh, Black Sheep versus Wheel. Um, it's going to be an exciting game, I think. Although we did start a little late because uh, Wheel had to get a stand in, but I hope we get a good game here. What do you guys think this matchup is going to be all about, guys? Um. I had to guess, whichever team uh, first says the Meepo is going to get this win, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this, is yeah, there even a the Meepo, Meepo player in this game, dude? I mean, there might be, right? I'm sure yeah. everyone can play Meepo. I bet Brink plays Meepo. Sure, yeah, true. Brink does, actually. Yeah. And I bet Bloody Nine actually plays The Meepo, the hero is not that hard, let's be honest. Alright. You just you play it 20 times, first... you're fine. Alright, first pick. What's left in the pool? Die? That's tiny. Tiny. Oh, tiny it's in the pool. Oh, alright, that's an obvious first pick, actually. Tiny got through. Wow. Well, I mean, what a surprise, guys. We got Tiny first pick, a dying second pick. Oof. Is it Ogre? Undying Dude, my fortune ogre? teller told me that one. Dude, it's gonna be an Ogre, for sure. No, I don't think it'll be Ogre. I think oh, Wheel's gonna take dying. Ogre. Might not pick ogre. I think Wheel will take Ogre now. Oh, I'm dying. That ogre. hero's so weak right I now. Don't, yeah, I don't think I like Weaver that much, either. Dying Weaver is a classic combo. Dude, Tiny though. Ogre sounds lit, bro. Also, Weaver is really good against Tiny. Yeah. I mean, the I issue is that that hero was nerfed pretty hard. Yeah, but like he's still decent, you know? He's not like nerfing yeah, into okay. the gun. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, Tiny's never going to get the bugs off him. Like, it's he was never going to be able to burst uh, Weaver me. at any point in the game. I mean, if the Weaver's good, he'll buy like Dragonlance or some shit. But like, there's still a lot of people who just sit on edgy treads, no dragon lands or some shit, and then they get comboed by this tiny and become food. So, like, I don't know. We'll see. If this Weaver player is good, and I assume he's good because he's Kenny, so he's, gonna, he's probably not going to feed relentlessly. Yeah. Who's the offline player? It's Frempo, right? Could be a Frempo. I think it's, yeah, it is Frempo. Frempo. Yeah, it could be Frempo Weaver. Ah, there we go. Alright, who could have telegraphed these first four picks, guys? Could you? Seems pretty standard to me. Yeah, it seems pretty standard stuff. Nothing they're, out of the ordinary. They're gonna spice things up in the second phase, though. Yeah, you think a Meepo is gonna come up in the second phase? I'm hoping. Could, could be yeah. pretty good for Wheel. Yeah. I'm looking forward maybe to a Huskar or something, maybe. That was a Drow's out of the pool. What do you guys think about Drow, actually? I don't think the hero is that good. I mean, he just like loses his lanes and then he doesn't really get six till later in the game and then he wants to recover in the jungle in the tri camp or whatever and usually if his core doesn't do well as well then he ends up having a really rough game and they just lose the game super fast or they do really well and win the game super fast i think it's like a well, you really hit or miss Seconds yeah remaining. you yeah, have draw. to win the other two lanes yeah Otherwise yeah if you a really rough game yeah if you lose at the other two lanes with a draw on your team it's pretty unfortunate because you normally pick strong lanes when you pick Drow, just so just because you know that that lane's gonna lose no matter what. Yeah. And if your other lanes lose, then like everybody's just scrambling for a lane, right? You know. So. Yeah. And especially Drow is not a great comeback hero either. He doesn't have this like Specter Haunt to help him get in the game, or like he doesn't have this team fighting alt like Void or something to get back. So. No, you just need to punch weak. Jungle Creeps yeah, for like thirty to, yeah, minutes. Exactly. And he never really does hit like this power spike, like PL or something, you know? Like, he's kind of just consistently doing the same thing, pumping damage. He has a good silent spell, and that's about it. He I would say his power spike's level 25 for sure. But, you think you know, so? That's I think, super I think 18, 20 is really good too. When he hits 20, he's super strong. And then 25 is just ridiculous, right? Because he has this 50% cooldown Just reduction. Spam? Yeah. What are we going to see? Terribly. Terribly. All right, yeah. That's good. They banned Zeus. Oh, this is a kid. It's a candy terrible then. That's for sure. And it's going to be a Frempo. It's going to be a Frempo. Yeah, PL looks absurdly good, actually. Yeah. Super good against Terrorblade. Super good against Tiny. But really bad for everyone watching at home because our PCs are going to just get destroyed. Well, not our, yours, but at least for mine. And <laughs> the. Yeah, the stream might go down. Yeah, the stream might go down. <laughs> <laughs> So Axe coming out here, really good That's against good Weaver. Pick, yeah, strong is against Terrible as well. Or is it a 5 Axe? 
It's really good because I think X is just getting picked because they can just play 5X in this case and send like the Ogre 3. It's like super flexible, but at the same time, the X can also just cut creep waves, right, against TB. And TB can't really do anything about it. And I don't think that um, Undying is going to do much slaughter. Very interesting. Super good against Tiny, right? No armor here on that hero. Super great, like, high damage amplification for the Terror Blade and the Weaver. Slaughter? I feel like it's one of those, you know, like the, sometimes in Dota, there's like these heroes that just get forgotten. I feel like yeah. Slaughter is one of those, recently at least. Yeah. All, I think he's pretty well, weak. What you say, say, like, how, like, you can't really lane him anywhere, right? Yeah, you, he has to be a core because he, he needs be items. Lane. He can be like a four or offlane, right? Like, I don't think it works as four. He's like good in the offlane with a, a setup stun, as a setup stun or something. It's okay. Yeah, super good. I mean, if the enemy has no armor, Slaughter just the thing makes is, it even worse, I think. Gives like the most of... potential always, you know. Yeah. It's like one of those, if they can make it work, right? Like it's gonna be really strong. Like the yeah. laning stage is definitely where he struggles. If so... like if Black Sheep managed to come out of the laning stage, even uh... I feel they can just take Roshan and take objectives really easily. They don't. They have like a clear game game plan, right? Like Terrorblade hits meta, gets two items, gets BKB, walks out, runs the towers, and there's absolutely nothing you can do as Wheel because. At that point, you can't really kill Terrorblade, nor can you just Blade Mill so call him, because he'll just amp you when you die, you know? So, I, Black Sheep has last pick as well, like, that, they're gonna, like, win win one of their lanes? Well, they, with these heroes, they're probably gonna win one of their lanes, right? And then yeah, for sure. Their, their last pick will probably win another lane, so yeah. probably, they should win two lanes. Also, I feel then... like Slaughter and this Weaver is just super strong. Because, yeah. like, there's no way they can get the Birth of Bugs, and Slaughter's super annoying to deal with because he'll just stun you, like, at least twice in an engagement. Alright, the Ballsy and Volker play coming out here for Brink, I think. The Volker player. What do you think the last picks here is gonna be? The TA is already banned out, right? So. So it's a safe lane tiny? I yeah. really don't like that Invoker pick, because you can just go mid with Terra Blade right now, and it, it definitely farms in the Invoker lane. That's true. Kind of whack. That means with the safe lane, tiny off lane axe. Then? Five seconds remaining. Yeah, or like an off lane ogre and a five axe or something weird. I feel like they they wanna they wanna dodge the undying weaver with the tiny, right? Yeah. Uh, it might be off lane tiny. I mean, would you put would you put something? weaver and undying in the same lane? I think you wanna dodge weaver slaughter. I think that's way scarier than, and undying can kind of secure the lane for terribly too, you know? Yeah. Like, I I think that's way scarier than. Putting Weaver and Undying in the same lane. Right, you're right. The Slaughter Terrorblade just seems way awful, actually. Yeah, it's, gonna be, it's definitely the Weaver with the Slaughter. Yeah. What's a good last pick here? I think Pug is pretty decent. You know, uh, natural Yule's Buyer against Axe, great against Invoker in lane. I don't know. Gaze banned here, so I'm not sure. Let's see. What do they need? I think they need, I think Pugna's a great hero. They need magic damage in your team. They need like someone that you can group early as with four, with Slaughter, great with the stun. I wanna see some Timber Saw. I think they're gonna get a Yule Spire. Punka. Okay. I want a Timber Saw. Not a Yule Spire. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, it is pretty good against Invoker though, yeah. Invoker does have a hard time against those heroes. Really? But at the same time, I feel like Invoker definitely should go for the Quaswex this game. Just because Terrorblade suffers a lot from not having mana, and he doesn't really buy mana items until he gets like a Scotty or something. And even then, he still suffers from a lot of mana issues. And recently, with like the changes to the cost, mana cost and Sunder and stuff, I could feel like Quaswex is really good this game. You know, they could just run and almost just take over the game really fast as four heroes. Do you think, uh,. You think Slaughter's build will be like blink yules? Because I feel like the only way Black Sheep like loses is if uh, Terrorblade gets called and just bursted during the call. Like, Blade Mail call, you know? I don't think this, uh... I, I personally don't think this Axe is gonna get, uh, do... be able to do that because he's gonna have a rough lane, right? It's gonna be, um... Axe Crystal Maiden bottom against uh, Undying and he can't really cut Creep Waves. So I mean, he, he's definitely going to get farmed, but he has a it, it shows that he has a clear like call target. But you kind of also want to call Weaver at the same time, and I don't think this Terra Blade and Weaver are ever going to be ever standing in the same spot. So yeah, yeah. I guess and and Dying can just heal too. Yeah, and with the boat, they take reduced damage. That's, they're probably fine. I I'm favoring uh, Black Sheep's draft this game for yeah, sure. Same. What about you, Chives? Yeah, for Maybe. sure. 
I, just I think it's stronger. just really easy to execute, right? You know, yeah, they have too. a lot of point and click spells, way easy to execute. They have a Brink Invoker though. That guy plays a mean Invoker. <laughs> Dude, I actually forgot to, that I had to move my own camera because I thought that the camera was going to get moved. Oh god. Alright, let's see what we have here. Looks like Axe is running down bottom with double stout shield. This is pretty much the standard build for offlaners nowadays. You know, it's good. He wants to cut creep waves, he can. Um, makes it so that um, Radiant can't really deal anything about it. Undying kind of messes with him. Do you think that's like a a decent solution? Then the Undying running at the Axe? I think it's okay early game, right? But like... Like for but like yeah, the first couple levels, like, right? The Undying's gonna get zero levels, and so it's gonna be... Who's Ike's Mike playing? That's the one to look out for. Ike's Mike's playing Undying. So look you out know for Undying. this Undying, everybody. Alright, everyone needs to watch Undying's gameplay. So, we have a B9 mid against uh, Brink. Brink's very well-known Invoker Spammer. Pretty good, very, very good at the hero, I'd say. Uh, Drip Drip on CM, KVH is playing the Tiny One. Enzo is playing... Um, Axe offlane with Thrugas on Ogre, and on the side of Dire, we got B9 Kunkka, we got Frempo on the Weaver, Dune on the Lardar, Kenny on his TB, which he loves a lot because he's a gold on the hero, and Ix Mike, the real yeah, MVP of this game. Look at him, he's just, he's got two snacks in, he's got Battle Hunger off, he's still ready to fan, man up, he's trying to get the decay off, but I would give him a nice little taunt right now, if I was, I think he's making a big mistake not using his taunt. <laughs> he dead. Nice. He's, he's I think decayed. he's gonna get a double decay off. Yeah, he's fine. What do you guys think? Look, oh, I expect oh, wow. the double decay. Twelve strength. He's ready to run in. He he tangled right up. Kenny and Ike Mike running head to head. I bet he's going to hit this guy. Kenny, what the hell are you doing? Hit him. Top lane. Something's going on. We're just gonna fight for the rune. Dune looks like he wants to stun. KVH giving him the tree. The big trees. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it, but you know what I was thinking. Uh, Kenny gets the rune, KVH gets the rune as well. Both safe laners somehow managing to click faster than the opposing off laner. So that's great for both teams. Frempo South does get forced out. Kenny gets battle hungered. He's very hungry right now, just like I am, because I haven't had the food today. I'm Damn. starving, bro. Order some pizza, dude. Uh, oh, pizza. Give me your address. I'll that's get some cake, Kona, bro. <laughs> Fuck. Actually, what is, is it like pizza just Italian? There should be an Italian emo, right? I expect that, right? Oh range. shit, I expect oh. gets almost oh. that strike, but Enzo steals it. I think that's a tactical death. death. Like, he, he was like half dead, you know, running low on mana. You know, that's he wanted that free trip back to that, home. That could have been really bad if Invoker got that. Yeah, Invoker pulling ahead in this lane is not something you want, but it looks like B9's doing very well for himself. 3 CS and 2 denies in uh, comparison to Brink's 1 and 0. But that's to be expected, right? Because. You know, Kunkka has this Tidebringer spell that lets him deny all these creeps and get secure last hits. So it's uh, almost hard for him, possible I would say, for Invoker to get as many CS as he does in the first wave. He's got to yeah. make it through the first few waves, suffering a little bit. Looks like Kenny's um, meta is down, so not much action going to be happening down here in the bottom lane. I ask Mike trying to pull, but I do not... I, he's going to make it! Oh no, he's, he doesn't! He's got it. He's got it. Oh man, I, how could I dare... I, I, do, I do these pulls a lot, dude. I know when he's dropped this. Alright, alright. Got it. Got it. So, we expect middle. What, what do you think middle's gonna be? I think middle's gonna be a one lane for B9 here. Uh, should have no problem against this invoker. And then bottom lane, I'd expect the wheel to win. But it looks like Kenny's having a pretty good time. Top CS, he's, you know, 10 and 4 right now. Although Enzo, oh, Ike's Mike gets the pull off. Very, very clutch here. Yeah. This makes it so that the X can't really freely just pull the creep wave back into the tower and control the creep equilibrium. Because ideally, you want to pull it before the tower, right? And then, then the lane gets uh, pushed right under your tower, and then the Terra Blade just has to sit there and watch. But in this case, you know. Yeah, it's, it's eventually gonna happen, but like, I well, did a great job there. I think what's gonna happen lane. in the bot lane though is the the two the two dyers are just gonna run at them, and then dying's gonna like run in the way. And they're yeah, just gonna yeah. like bash their heads into each other while exactly. The creeps, so. I think this isn't it's, it isn't gonna be too bad for uh, the sa radiant safe lane here. I think they can definitely get some farm. Kenny's definitely showing that. Uh, top lane, however, I'd say is going fairly even, although you know. K uh, KVH is starting to pull ahead, but that's what's what you expect, right? He has a 
tree grabbing skill that lets him get a bunch of CS advantage over the other core. So it's kind of impossible. Brempo also having to go back to base. Yeah, this middle lane is Ooh. actually over. I've been watching this. Yeah. Like, B9 I'm... hasn't actually been CSing. He, he, the fir he, how this lane works, right, is but when he's level 3, he needs to deny like every single creep while Invoker's level 2. Uh huh. And that way he hits level 4 and he's able to like rush him with Tidebringer or with uh, X Mark and stuff. But now Invoker's like fine because we're even on levels. This okay. lane's actually not that bad for Invoker. Alright. He is actually catching up with CS very well. B9 does still have the 9 CS, but will Yeah, he's definitely going to pull ahead soon, you know, fading the nice here and there. But uh, Kenny does pop the meta down in the bottom lane. He's gonna secure these two creep waves. I think Black Sheep are definitely very happy. Ix Mike's in trouble here, however. He gets meta hungered up. Frugos throws out the ignite. Ix Mike doesn't seem to be going down. He still it's has fine. a up left and a stick KVH. No, he's dead. It, however, he's gonna kill both. Kills Mune. No, he's dead. Uh, he's dead, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's gone. He's gone. By Ix Mike there. He was off by like two HP points. Otherwise, he would kill them all. That's true. Uh, Ix Mike with the NA math. Top lane, however, KVH does get the kill on uh, Dune on the Slaughter here. I think, um, although the Dyer are seem to be doing well, or like Radiant seem to be doing well in terms of CS, Dyer are getting these very key kills that are helping them stay in this game, I feel. Because if they give up kills and they're losing in CS at the same time, it's gonna turn into a really rough mid game for them. Top lane, there's some action. They're gonna get on KVH here. The Dune does not hit the stun. KVH gets a CS. They get a double frost. No, that's a crystal nova, guys. My bad. Not a CM player. Yeah, like you said, mid lane. Not as big of a wash as I expected. Well, Brent plays a lot of invokers as well. Yeah. So he's probably, he probably knows how to go even or win. For in sure. This matchup. So. Derp Derp's getting low here. He gets tossed up. Dune gets his stun. Brempo dropping down low. They both get killed at the same time. Dune gets like. stun right here. Does he take? He takes one more tower shot. Does the tree? Is the tree enough? Is he gonna throw it? Gonna throw it? Or... <laughs> Stop. Is, he, is he gonna? What? I think he's got this. He's got this. Oh, Dion's just oh. juking out on trees. He's not gonna wow. get him. All right, there's an X going on in the middle lane. The torrent. The cold snap stops it, but he gets hit by the torrent anyway. All right, very interesting turn of events, guys. Weaver's Prempo back. does the Prempo's life traded for the. Prep uh, is all back in the lane, dude. Look at this. This tiny don't want none of this. <laughs> dude, this tiny's gonna run back, dude. bro. Yeah, both both cores in this lane have had to walk back to base. Yeah. Actually, no. KVH is just gonna run to shrine. That's fine. But Frempo's walked back to base before, and that's really bad. Yeah. I mean, it does give up some levels for your slaughter, which is very important, right? Because slaughter has a rough time finding levels outside the laning phase. You know, he's constantly running around, only contributing these stuns. And it's very important that his ganks work out, because if he just misses a gank once or twice, he's gonna be super underleveled, and you don't really want an underleveled slaughter. KVH getting gone on here, the bugs... Nothing's happening. KVH is just giving them the tree, bro. The big tree. Bring on the mid lane, he tries to hit the Sunstrike, tries to predict the sidestep, but... B9. The counters to good Invoker players is usually just walking in a straight line, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's, that's <laughs> true, actually. <laughs> but you, you gotta obviously establish that you're a good uh, mid player first, you know? If you're like a dummy, you're just gonna start like, in a straight line. But if you establish that you have somewhat a semblance of skill, you know? Just walking in a straight line usually just ends up working out for you. Yeah, this is really nice you know who I think here. will be having a really good game this time? Kenny. Everyone Kenny's knows having good. a great time down in the bottom lane, honestly. Like, uh, as a safe lane player, whenever you get 35 CS to 7 minutes in the mark, 36, you're a happy camper. You know, he's gonna pop meta here, he's gonna push out this wave, and I think he's gonna stay here, or... Yeah, he's gonna stay here. He's level 6, the Axe is level 4, you know, and the Ogre's only level 3. Ix Mike is 3, but the pulls and the harass that Ix Mike has in lane just definitely is showing here. Yeah, it's just the Ix Mike factor, man. He runs it's... in, you know. He died twice, but you think he cares? Look at his Terrorblade. He does Everyone not care. At EB. Very true. He's hitting creeps. Good point. Why don't you ever do this for me yet, Orin? Damn. <laughs> uh, wait for the Orin factor to come in. KVH, Talos, the Avalanche gets stunned up, he gets frostbit. Frempo's a little bit of trouble, there's a Sentry Ward, and they do get the kill. And they also feed away the bugs. With the 30 gold each. 
The boat hits on Frugos mid. Frugos takes two more power shots, but there is the stick to save his life. B9 just exits himself and goes back home. So I'm, I'm arriving a little late to these fights, not gonna lie. Gotta be a little bit on top of this. Focus up, Ryan. Focus up. Dude, I, I'm telling you, my stomach is talking to me right now. There's literally two casters going on. Alright, Dune gets hit by a uh, Crystal Nova. He starts running at him, hits the stun off. The toss comes in, cancels the clarity. Frempos tries to do it as well, but he's level 4, he gets avalanched up. The Sunshine comes up with a force fight. Perfect combo from Wheel. The Bugs is taken off on Derp Derp. Derp Derp looks like he's gonna go down here. He gets tossed up. Derp Derp survives. Oh, he dies to the Bugs. The tree comes out, the stun. KVH gets a, is on a killing spree, and he gets the Bug as well. In the mid lane, Brink is dropping down low. As Tiny's out. Yes, what their tiny. Look at him. It is. Ooh, the TP in comes in from CM. The Torrent, perfectly timed from B9. What a player. The Frostbite just to cancel the little last tick of the bottle. Ooh, bottom lane, however. Kenny, uh, I Ike's Mike goes down. But you think Ike's Mike cares? Ike's Mike no cares. He, he doesn't want them to feel completely broken, you know? He doesn't want to break true. their spirits yet. You know? Not yet, not yet. Just wait. So, so far, we're, we're 9 minutes in. You know, TB's doing very well at the top. Uh, 6 TCS, 12 denies. But mid lane, B9 goes down to a gamp from Derp Derp and Brink. Very good combination here. I think he extended a little too far in the mid lane, and so he just got cold snap and frostbitten down. You know, this Terrorblade doing Terrorblade things, guys. He's just gonna be jungling. He's gonna rotate top here. He's gonna tell his team, I have meta, let's smoke and kill this Tiny. Tiny's been having a really good time up here, but not for long. He's dropping a little low. I think he smells something's going afoot. Well, yeah, I think he smells a foot. Because, oh, something's going on here. The Radiant Season just, there's also a die award here. Those who didn't know, they're both standing on top of a ward. Kenny is smoked. The Slaughter does see them. He gets frostbitten up. He's gonna get comboed here. Does he fall? No, Dune survives. The Ike's Mike 2 goes down. The Swarm comes out. The both of them are taking armor dropping by one per second. Derp, derp. The Sunstrike comes out. Hits absolutely nothing. Looks like Clipton's gonna be the only casualty here. Or is it? KVH tosses out a zombie. Zombies, there's both. It's madness. It's no madness, way. yeah. It's just one of those games, right, where it's so hard to click things. Yeah, Tiny as, really as struggles. A, <laughs> yeah, Tiny has a rough time clicking these things. You know, he's got to swing his big burly arms up in the sky, I think. Frempo's having a rough game, guys. Frempo's level 5 on Weaver nah, at 10 minutes in the game. Let me tell you a little about Frempo. Frempo. You know, right. you think he's having a rough. Next thing you know, you know, He's gonna be at the top of the net worth, you know? He's gonna get like a rampage in this game. I'm calling it now. Like, this is all part of his plan. Have you ever played with Frempo? No, I haven't. That's what I'm asking you, the Frempo expert here. But we gotta hold on that. There's a TP coming in from Axe. Dirt gets hit by a swarm, but that's a body. He gets tossed in! Dirt Dirt tossed in! The Frostbite comes out. He just starts channeling the freezing field. I Spike looks like he's gonna go down here. Kenny TP's out. Wow. Damn. Alright, sorry. You were saying, Frempo? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. it. Frempo's <laughs> that's a genius, basically it. <laughs> Dude, I was so excited, dude. You hyped me up about if you ever, If you ever doubt someone, Frempo's not the person to doubt. Alright, that's for sure. Alright, who should we be doubting here? So, obviously, me. we can't doubt oh, Ike, Mike. We can't no, doubt no, no, Frempo. No. no, no, no. You know, you can't doubt Fre Kenny, because Kenny is 77 CS at 11 minutes. This man's a happy camper. So, if B9 looks like he's going in, he hits the boat. So, you can't really fault B9 either. So, what do you think this, the. I don't doubt this anyone in this game. They're all, they're all capable. They're all. all right. Yeah. Good. Great analysis from all. Never count anyone out. Never count anyone out. Nice. Alright, there's combo going off here. Ike's might look like he's gonna go down again. He does drop the tomb before he dies though. However, the hits the swarm hits everyone on Dire. Dire is taken down. Tiny's having a rough time hitting this. Derp, derp, the so zombies dead. and the swarm everywhere. It looks like Dirt Dirt's gonna get go down to Ike's Mike here. Retribution for the dip. The ogre gets tossed in. He does not have detection, however, so he can't stun him. They're trying to get this tombstone, but Ike's Mike with his perfect positioning. Oh, I spoke a little too soon. Oh, KVH does get it. There's a ward up there. But now they know they have a ward up there. So Ike's Mike, great place. The call comes in from the Axe. The blink, oh. the Sunstrike does miss, however. The big call. Ike's Mike decides. Oh, I don't think this is a good dive, Enzo. Enzo goes in. Brink is there. He gets tossed by KVH. He has the alacrity going. They're hitting Ike's Mike. Ike's Mike doesn't seem to be losing any health whatsoever. Brink is gonna go down from the boat from B9. The top does come out. Ike's Mike goes down for a second time here. KVH is hit up by the swarm. The torrent comes out. 
Is he gonna sidestep it? He misses. Cage has one armor. He has a negative armor. Fremper is gonna deal a bunch of damage. Flicky is here. He calls him up as he goes invisible. Great play from Enzo here. A triple kill for him. And KVH, he still wants more. He throws him in. He gets the stun off. The Torn does hit on Ogre, but I don't think it matters. KVH grabs up a tree. B they're gonna die B9 here or not? They should be careful here. They're B9 has in. used up his stick here. The call comes up. He's gonna give him the chop. And so with an ultra kill, essentially, can he come in with the clarity? Dumps? Pops the meta. Damn. He is gonna run very slow, he's however. He gets, tools. he gets uh, amped up. Almost forgot what the skill was called. I think it's just called Corrosive Haze, right? Yeah. He gets amped up, they have Vision of Frugos, and so this is the stun. The Sunstrike does miss as well. It's just the ch skills missing left and right. KVH goes and gets hit up by the meta. What are you doing, KVH? Oh no, he feeds away the killing spree. And 365 gold, as much gold as there is days in a year. Unless it's a leap year, then it's a 366 gold. Very absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, you know, it seems that it's 7 to 6 in kill score, but the game is very even. I feel like it's about time. I think Ix Mike steps it up, or like, you know, he's been stepping it up, but he's probably playing it a little down, so Radiant, Dyer doesn't get too, you know, discouraged from this game. What do you say we jump into the comms of uh, Black Sheep to hear what Ix Mike's telling them right now? Yeah, let's do it. Alright, let's do it. I can't see the axe right now. I'm gonna I do not off. think you should be standing on top of me right after you. Oh, yeah, I think he's back right now. Axe is there? They yeah, probably have tiny smoke. shadow blade or something. Smoke. I'm farming bottom, guys. Let's right just here. get back. Haste on a rover. They're on. They're up here. Yeah, they're gonna come wrap on mid, probably. I have no bugs. There's bounties soon. They're probably just sitting on bottom. Nah, oh, they could have repped here actually. No, no. They're, they're not there. They're not top. I think they're bottom. They could be there. They could be. They could be. They didn't take the bounty yet, though. so I think they're bottom. We should defend. Yeah, they're behind our tier one now. Here, here, here. I can come for defending. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. We don't have glyph. It's gonna just die. Actually. Can you start the fight? Yeah. This looks good. I'm far away. Fight on the two. This is a big kill. I got double. Gonna get popped here, I think. Nice. They're dead. They're... I just axed That's just got kill. a bunch of on Get down, eh? Pretty slow. Oh my god, you're on your own for this one. I can pop back. Fighting by the way. Yo, back me up. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, you gotta yeah. stop missing those stuns. Yeah, you try and try and try and think quick. And he's back. I kinda just lost the one. Alright, very Damn. interesting. I think Ix Mike was the one that was calling out all the smokes there. You see the warden behind the mid tier one and tier two? I think that ward by Ix Mike definitely spotted out the first smoke. Yeah. He he called out where the enemy was. It looked like Ax my head map hacks on, dude. He knew exactly where the enemy was constantly. Oh. Well, it's almost unfair for Raid Dyer to be playing against a man of such a caliber. He knows exactly where the enemy team is. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it was it a very hectic like team this... fight, but uh, yeah, sorry, you were saying something? If it looks like the Dyer has a chance against Ax Mike in this game, you know, that's part of Ax Mike's plan, I'm sure. He yep. wants them. Um, have hope going in the game too, you know? Thinking like, exactly. oh, we almost won this game. And the next game, Ike's Mike's gonna be popping off. You just watch. Great point, great point. You know what though, however, uh, Enzo did just pick up the bla blade mill, you know? I said that he wasn't gonna get this item till later, but looks like he has it right now. You know, he has been popping off this game. Second in uh, net worth behind Kenny here. It looks like yeah. Dyer has been leading all these heroes except for uh, Kenny sitting at the top comfortably on Terror Blade. You know, he's farming away. He's gonna get his Manta style soon. Uh, looks like bottom lane KVH is running in with his Invis rune that he just picked up, not a Shadow Blade. The rest of them are smoke, and so does bottom out. They get the ward. He's sitting right on top of it. Sunshine comes down. He does not chop him. He gets Avalanche. Top lane, however, Derp goes down solo to Frempo. 
Yeah, this axe is a problem. That's why, like, uh, like I was saying in the draft, like, uh, the only way I see, like, like the dire win late game, right, is, like, if the axe calls them, right? Uh, yep. Seems to be happening, so it's kinda... You know, hopefully the undying seal and the bow is enough to save them from whoever gets cold. Definitely. Looks like the Radiant here setting up to push out the top lane. They have the tombstone. I think they're gonna heal up Frempo here. Frempo has the clarity running. B9's here as well. He does not have both for 23 seconds though. Brink, however, doesn't seem to want to fight actually. He is 600 gold from his Ag Scepter and he's probably telling his team that he wants to farm it. Dire have a are all set up bottom lane because they want to take a tower to their own. Uh, Derp Derp's very scared. He's just sitting way far behind and looks like Dire just gonna give up the tower for free. Yeah, he's just there to like defend the T3 or whatever. Yeah. I really like both wards from both teams, actually. They've got really deep wards from both sides. This ancient ward here, and this ward behind the mid tier 2 on the side of Radiant. And they also have this, uh, the one that got him the kill on Slaughter down in the bottom Radiant side. These wards from both teams, really good. Uh, just gives, giving a bunch of information for them to play. Maneuver around the map more efficiently. Looks like a smoke's coming out here from Radiant. It is yeah, they just not got spotted blank. out. Yep, they just got slaughtered. Blank. Not spotted out for by a by a ward. So the Dyer are not gonna know that this is coming. B9 seems like he's baiting this. The Sunstruck to check out the Roshan previously, and they know that they're not in there. Derp Derp finds one of the wards, even though it's only a minute left. Um, they start running in. The crash comes out. Derp Derp getting caught. He gets amped up. Rugos has caught it well, KVH tries to go on Ice Spike, the Tornado comes out, Stop. Yun is going down, a boat hits on two people, Enzo gets a two-man call, great, Ice Spike drops the two down on the high ground, and Kenny gets frostbitten up, they're chasing down Enzo here, in the back line, Brink is being chased down by Frempo, Enzo goes down, Kenny gets a double kill, and that that was all she said? Ooh, not, not exactly, B9 gets caught by a frostbite here, almost goes down, does go down to the Sunstrike. Kenny gets the return kill, a triple kill for Kenny, Brink's walking up in the high ground here, he looks like he wants a little bit more of the action, drops a tornado and EMP, he might have been a little more than he can chew. Ix Mike gives him the good old soul rip, the NA rip there, and that's it, KVH is pushing out the top lane. Yeah, so, they axe, hit. who did he call, he called like Undying He called Kunka? the, he called, yeah, Undying Kunka. And that was like after the boat got off, so it just like, it made like his uh, call not do very much damage. Yeah. I feel like in these fights, right, if they take out this, uh, if they take out this TB, it's gonna be a super easy fight, but it's very hard for them to do that, because they have to deal with this tombstone, they have this annoying ass swarm on them, you know, if they, if they commit way too much on this TB, then the rest of Radiant are just gonna pummel them. But if they don't focus the TB, you know, TB is gonna wail on them, and you know, it's just, it's just a very hard decision, you know. Who they want to focus in these fights. It looks like Dion gets hit by the Sun Strike here, he pings out. I think the Dyer are gonna realize, suspect that the Radiant are gonna do Roshan soon. Another thing so. that might be worth mentioning is like the Radiant with their draft, they're they're always gonna have vision in the fire, right? Because they have like yeah. the tomb, the bugs, the images scouting, and then like the amp damage from the Slardar. Uh, so I was gonna cut you off there, but I wanted to let you finish your sentence. In the mid lane, Enzo gets a call off with the blade mail on Frempo. Really nothing you can do as a Weaver in that situation. There's a tornado that comes out on Ix. Mike gets a call off. Mike looks like he's dropping low here. Does he get dunked? No, he does not get dunked. Enzo with a disrespect, not dunking Mike. I feel like, you know, you should definitely dunk him there for the respect. <laughs> nah. The thing is, you say Ix Mike, the dude. disrespect, you don't dunk him. but... Yeah, Are you sure? exactly. But you can't dis You can't dunk Ix Mike. Oh, that's true. That's... Dude, that's a good point, actually. He does not get dunked, though. Yep. Can't be happy. Immediately after those two pickups, though, Dyer now in Roshan, just gonna take it real quick. He calls, Kenny sends an illusion in, sees it as soon as possible. KVH combos the illusion, absolutely rips on that illusion. The illusion disappears, 100 to 0. Another one looks like it's gonna get sent in. This illusion's popping in. I wonder if KVH is gonna do the same thing to this illusion. The Roshan is dropping very low, and Dyer doesn't seem to be committing. The ice wall drops out. The boat tries to come, but hits nothing on the backside, however. The call comes out. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny gets multicasted. Anso goes down. He gets sundered. Rugos gets amped up. He's getting pushed away. The tombstone goes down the Roche pit. Brinks hitting away on the illusions. KVH getting pounded here. B9 is low on health, but Kenny gets another kill on Derp Derp here. Brink, on the other hand, is getting run down by Dion and Frempo. Kenny's dropping low with Battle Hunger. Ike's Mike with the buyback. I mean, Enzo with the buyback comes in clutch. Gets that tombstone. nothing. That tombstone destroyed them in this fight. 
Yeah, that's Tuto's doing work here. That's at least six zombies here. It looks like World War Z going on here. Oh my goodness. Radiant just absolutely demolishes Dire in that team fight. Kenny gets the Aegis. Dude, the axe called the Terror Blade with the Blade Mill. Almost killed him there with a the multicast. But he just gets sundered on. And all of a sudden he's dead and has to buy back. And he comes back to a fight where his teammates are absolutely dead. And then he dies back. I don't know, I think this axe feels like he's throwing his own game away, man. What do you guys think? Yeah, that, that, that was pretty right. bad. <laughs> that was just a... F like, they killed six people and no one died on radio. Yeah. And they got I mean, Roshan. it was all thanks to that tombstone, right? That sick positioning of the tombstone right inside the Roche pit by Axe Mike. Absolutely won in the team fight there. Ring, okay, this fight going on mid. The tornado comes out, the EMP, the Ice Wall. Ice Wall doesn't really slow a Weaver who has a maximum speed ability. He gets thumbed up, meta, and... The boat comes in, finishes the job. Frugos is trying to hit up. B9 gets this arm. Derp Dip gets hit up. He is corrosive pace. Frugos is dropping low. Frempo trying to finish the job. He, the avalanche from KVH misses. There's an X coming out. A corner on KVH. KVH is being focused here. Corrosive pace. Looks like Dire is just falling apart. It's running in one by one, getting X and torrented. And all the time, the TV wasn't even there. He was and making his way chain over. Feeding. What can you do? Dude, he was making his way downtown, dude. He was walking fast, faces pass, and he's in town. <laughs> this yep. game is pretty rough for Dire. It though. is very rough for Dire. I don't th at this point with a uh, KVH and Invoker dead. I think Kenny can definitely force something here with his Aegis. He doesn't. One he day doesn't meta. Does yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Matter though. Like he gets called, he dies. It's like whatever because, like, see. Oh my goodness! Oh, is Arkezy in this game? He meant to dodge his Rempo. How Gifford gets caught out. Alright, so that's gonna be the end of that, but Kenny, insane Manta dodge there, very cool. You know, if anything, oh, Enzo trying to run in, get stunned up by Bjorn, there's an X on Enzo here, is he gonna get torrented? I think that X might have just saved his life, the Aegis comes out, he gets destroyed by a Meteor and TV, the Aegis does pop, Enzo running away very low on health, I think the Dyer want to re-engage here, but Dion is constantly positioning himself in a way so he can disengage and stop the fight from happening, and that was it. Nothing else happens. Wow. I think the X definitely got saved by the X there. Well, I, I don't think he would have ran forward if he was an X, though. So. I think, think so? he ran forward because he was X. Yeah. Okay. He was like current distance between where he got X from and uh, like them, you know? So by like yep. running at them, making them like back up more. So. Dude, it's almost sad to watch KVH try to kill a Terrorblade Illusion with auto attacks. Because by the time he gets like four hits in, this TV has already hit him at least 20 times, I'm pretty sure. Those images uh, are so tanky too, actually. Yeah. They have so much armor. I mean, exactly why you saw him absolutely demolish that illusion in the Roche Pit, right? He sent the illusion in there and KVH gave him the big old booty slam. He just. Comboed him down. Alright, there's a TP going on here. It looks like there's a smoke on Derp Derp, and that's exactly what they want to do. This is not spotted out by a Radiant Ward. Undying's gonna tank it. Though. Undying's gonna pop it. I expect the big place. He gets a two man call on B9, however. Through goes away, KVH with the combo. The stun from Dune, the stun of Ogre, the B9, the deafening blast of the meter hits on Dune here. Brink getting hit up by the uh, reflection. KVH has a bug on him that he has to get off. Can Everyone's just running away from this fight. Da Radiant doesn't seem like they want to fight, and Dire too. They're just running away from each other. I think but they're I think afraid of the TB That was a great there. pickoff, right? That great blind. He didn't know that the Kunkka was there, but he decided to blink in with a call, the Kunkka and the Undying at the same time. Ix Mike did a great job there, breaking the smoke, but I think B9 had to be positioned oh, a little bit further. For more? Looking for more here. Alright, it's fine. Bring runs in. Drops a very deep ward. That's what I like to see. Deep wards. Something like position 5 almost never seems to do in my games. Is that true? Damn. Who's that? Watch the replay five. and you'll know, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of friendly banter coming out here. Alright. It looks like Radiant definitely has the gold lead. But Dire are definitely coming back into the game. The smoke gets popped by the Weaver. You know, they decide they don't know where he is, they have no detection, they drop a sentry up here, but it's a little too late. They do see the DD rune, however. I think they're gonna try to make a play here. Kenny TP's out of the top lane, picks up his BKB, which he's had. Not noticed that, but B9 
pushes out the play bottom lane. Dune almost has this Yule Scepter. Great analysis by Auron in the beginning to tell us that he was going to go blink Yules for this Axe. Axe looks like he's going to have to buy a BKB, else he's just going to get Yules up every single time he blinks and calls this Terror Blade here. I mean, he has to go Yules. It's like he has to, right? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty yeah, good on Carter like anyway, too. Radiant are fairly content this game with just farming it out. Because at some point, this TB is going to have enough items to the point where Dyer won't have enough scaling to deal with it. This Tiny is not going to scale, right? And X doesn't really scale that well either, you know, because he only scales as well as the other core skill. And I feel like Terrorblade's just one of those heroes who deal with Axe Blade Mill really well because he's just returning physical damage. And as a carry with like 40 armor, you know, you don't really hurt yourself that much, you know? It's it's not as much as you would in comparison to like an anti-mage or a juggernaut, I feel. So Terrorblade's not the worst hero to have against an Axe. Yeah. I mean, Axe is good against... Yeah, not in the late game anyway, right? Like, yeah. the lane's pretty good for Axe. But and, you know, at the end of the day, you have this Beaver that also scales really hard. Undying may not be the strongest hero, but Kunkka, as we all know, We've all been in those games where Kunkka gets two rapiers and then one shots to support. I feel like the later the game goes, the CM's gonna have a very rough one. I mean, not to mention Sardar, like, late game, Sardar? Yeah, late game Sardar is just very scary. very strong. Well. And they have low armor heroes like Invoker and Tiny. Plus, uh, Sardar level 20 talent is also super strong. That plus 1000 night vision is actually insane. Yep. Yeah, he's gonna see everything. Why do you guys think these teams tend to not use scan? I think for Radiant, I do we use like no one else. <laughs> we don't scan use scan either. No, it seems like none of these teams use scan. Of all these games that I've watched, it's very rare to watch teams actively use scan off cooldown. I'll, I try to use scan like around the, like the time, like see if someone's at like a bounty rune or something. But yeah, I, I just don't I'm see mad, it happen. <laughs> Is it underwhelming? I mean, personally, as a carry player, I, I I feel like I don't ever use a scan, but I feel like I should do that more often. You definitely yeah. should. You can use it to like see if it's safe to farm in areas or... Exactly, yeah. So like bottom lane right now, right? Like, the Dire just taking over the Radiant jungle, and the Radiant have taken over the Dire jungle. And this is basically do how Dota has been for the past three years, so... It's honestly not a surprise to see this happening. Everyone's farming up, and I think this definitely benefits the Radiant, because they're content with having this TV farm of the Scotty. You know, at some point, he's just gonna become this monster that Radiant Dyer can't deal with. Ix, Mike, and Dune running together. They're trying to find someone here. All right, Ryan. Could. What do you want to see Dyer do then? How do they win this game? What do they do here? It's hard, right? Because they they want to call and fa have good vision and try to find. And like right here, Frempo shows in the mid lane. But I think Dyer are ready for this. The call comes out. The Sunstrike comes out. He does get the dunk, however, Frempo is immediately dead. The boat comes out as well, he hits on Ansel. Ansel getting ripped apart by Dune's corrosive haze and Kenny's meta. Zerpdub gets hit up here. He does have a Ghost Hunter, however, that will save him. Ice Wall comes out, slows the rest of Radiant from facing. Kenny BKB's up, Brink goes in this, nothing happens of it. Dune gets comboed up by Tiny, gets destroyed. Brink with a deafening blast on the Spike on B9 there. Very hectic fights, Dune casts, I mean, Derp Derp casts. Terrorblade has no BKB, he's gonna get comboed up, he's gonna get Toss, Avalanche, and immediately destroyed. If previously you asked me what they had to do, right? I think uh, they did exactly. It is. Yeah, there it is. That's exactly what they had to do. They have to just try to get a fight, and this is their timing. Because the later the game goes, it's gonna be unplayable. I expect gets caught out here, it's probably just uh yeah. Well what do you think that was, Alrin? I, I actually have no excuse for I expect this time. Yeah. I mean uh, the what team was dead the if I too. Oh, okay, something like that, alright, cool. Yeah, one for all, all for one, something like right. that. Krempo's up alive, he was the first person dead, Ike's Mike does buy back, he wants part of the action. KVH, however, doesn't seem like he's leaving. He does know the care of his up. The Frempo gets comboed up a little miscommunication, a little late on the Sun Strike, but he would have got the kill, the meteor that comes out. Ike's Mike gets to a big Ike's Mike with a big decay, the big call here from the axe on both the Slaughter and Weaver goes down, the EMP takes away all the mana, the sticks up to kill them up, Dirt the TP's out of the fight. Axis looks like he's gonna be left for dead, Brink runs away on Ghostwalk, and... Wow, just... Very chaotic fights, right? You know, first yeah. they started off with a combo on 
Weaver. You know, I think if they timed it properly, they would have got the kill, but because they didn't, the Weaver time lapse out of it. But now it looks like Roshan's up, and Kenny's already in the pit. He's trying to go for this B9. Ooh, I think they might have given away that they were doing Roshan from that archer. But I don't think it matters because they do it so fast with this uh high would have to buy with, back. Uh, with like this really. slaughter, yeah. And you don't really want to buy back on your axe, you know. He already he's having he had a good game, but then the buyback previously and the buyback really hurt his game. Alright, let's let's talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Frempo. What what would you like to see Frempo do here? What do you want out of Frempo, Ryan? I think I want Frempo to get a little bit more health, because at this point he's very susceptible to like just combos into sun strikes, and he's just down, right? You know, all these fights we've been watching, the first one in the mid lane fight, this guy just gets comboed, and he's just dead from this axe call. He needs some items to keep himself alive, so he can actually play some Dota, you know? He's actually just showing in lanes, <laughs> and just immediately getting comboed down. I think it's gonna happen again here in the bottom lane. He's, they're gonna drop the sentry ward, and this guy looks like he's gonna have a rough one. Ooh, they see him running away. You gonna use him? Hello? What face? I think they're I don't think they had detection, right? Him. Oh no, they I had mean, detection too. Frugos oh. had detection. He definitely could have gone on that. Oh, a little bit of... I don't know. If he used that with the EMP Sunstrike, he definitely would have died there, for sure. I mean... Sometimes it's hard to tell, right? Because the enemy team's just missing. Raiden's doing a good job, not showing force in every lane. So... At this point, you're kind of thinking, oh, they're running to us right now. It's a little too late. You know, if we didn't get the initial jump, we might as well just not try it. Brink, something to say, however, is Brink has got level 20 now. He is 22 and has Cataclysm. So any good call from this axe is going to do a lot of damage. Yeah. You know, it's, this is it's definitely their timing. Yep. Dire is very strong right now. They can blow up almost every hero on Radiant. Invoker, next to neck and farm with this Terrorblade. Terrorblade needs at least two more items before he can solo carry this game, I feel, in my opinion. And so, going for a Lotus Orb, not sure if that's the best item choice. I feel like he definitely needs BKB at some point in this game. You think Dyer's okay going late game, actually? I know Brink plays a lot of Invoker. Maybe Rocky, they're just he does. I do. But... Maybe they just think he can... Invoker can definitely take over this game, for sure. Right. Like, the, the reason why they won the last fight is because Invoker literally cast every single one of his spells. And he was just allowed to do that, just let him do it. That's true. Yeah, because like Axe and Tiny, they just run in and it's hard for them to get on the Invoker. I feel like on Radiant, at this point, the only core that pumps out damage is Terrorblade, right? You know? If you kill this Terrorblade, because like just the last fight here at the bottom jungle, Radiant side, he did not have BKB. Oh my god, the smoke misses on everyone here. Looks like it's just Kenny who gets smoked. Yeah, like, so, like, so I was saying, <laughs> Kenny's the only one who gets smoked. So, Wait, like, who uh, used it? Uh, I think it was Ike Smyre, actually. <laughs> but he's not it had to be Kenny, either. right? It was definitely Kenny. Kenny was the only on smoke. Or was, or was the courier? Could have been the courier. No, I think the courier smoked them. Yeah, I think they used it a little too early. But, yeah, so like I was saying, like, Frempo's kind of like a non factor in these fights, you know? He's just getting caught out the first, but now he has Ag Scepter, so I feel like he should be staying back, trying to defend his uh, Terror Blade from getting caught, or um, you know, if his Slaughter or his B9 gets caught out. I think he definitely needs to be the one supporting his teammates here. I mean, the issue with that is that he needs to do damage in these fights. Yo, should we hop in like, uh, wheels? Yeah, let's hop into wheels. Uh, yeah. Do that. Go. Oh, wait. Alright, never mind. Wheel spot. Alright, uh -huh. let's get back to the game. Uh, a combo for the Ike Spike. Ike Spike goes down that two stones. Ansel gets completely destroyed by the Slaughter's amp. KVH tries to meant to dodge the boat, but he's not as good as Kenny, however. Frempo's going in the back line. There's a buyback from the boat, and also gets killed. There's a buyback from everyone. KVH goes down. Kenny does not have BKB anymore. The destruction comes out. B9 hits. They're trying to kill Ansel. And there's a dive from Ansel. The Cataclysm comes out. Kenny takes a That's bunch a of damage. Cataclysm. But the Thunder on KVH. That was a big mistake here. KVH. Kenny's just gonna rip apart. There's a dieback from both the Invoker and the X. Thurpton gets caught up by the X here. It looks like he's gonna die because he does not have Ghost Scepter anymore. Frugos tries to run in, tries to hit the, them with the Fire Blast and the Unrefined Fire Blade Blast. Okay Terror Blade is fine. He has oh, the okay. yeah, Thurpton, the, the Freezing Field. What is going on? Kenny Terror Blade's alive. Frugos has a stun up in 3 seconds. Frempo is dropping down low. He has an ult in 10 seconds. Derp, Derp, and KVH both badly bugged at their own. He almost Kenny thunder. gets killed by the Feels tiny. Bad. Oh, that was so close. He was literally a second away from Sunder. 
So it looked really bad for Dyer there. Yeah. Immediately Radiant. getting killed. Uh, I think Radiant's happy with it. They got the rack. Yeah, for sure. I would be happy. I think it was Radiant. very sloppy. Yeah. Like they way overextended. Yeah. So they like got the two diebacks on the axe and the invoker, and I feel that they should immediately have just stopped chasing this ogre and the CM, right? Like, cause they tried to go for this ogre and CM, he they got the kill, and then immediately after they just ran after this ogre for some reason. Like this ogre really doesn't do anything, and because of that, the KV came back, he respawned, immediately bursted down Kenny. You know, even though he did make that mistake, however, of letting him center the first time, just killed him and terrified without BKB and no Aegis. It really isn't that terrifying without meta as well, right? So I, like I can see point... why they did it though. Yeah. Cause like if they kill Tiny there, they just win the game. Actually. Who is back? But it's, it's really risky. Anyway. They used uh, I think Axe and Invoker and Tiny. Only, maybe. only terribly no, can have it. Tiny, Invoker, all used their buybacks. All three cores. Yeah, Weaver were used it too. Yeah, the Weaver did use his buyback. And the only people who buy back right now is V9 and K. Top lane invoker's TPing, Ix Mike pings this out. He knows that he's here because he saw him be there. The DK comes out, tries to push out the main. And he's gonna hit them with the Tidebringer. And so battling out with the Slaughter Illusion here. I think Dyer can definitely take this late. They have a Bloodlust of Tiny, and Tiny is going for a really late game items, right? He has this Mantis style, and he's buying a Daedalus. And I feel like if he gets one more item like a Butterfly that allows him to scale into the late game, Definitely gonna have a really good time dealing with. Yeah, have you ever seen a uh, rapier tiny did with a Daedalus? You just throw trees with a cooldown file. Every like five seconds, you just throw a tree at them. Ooh, the, the call comes out. The blade of the cataclysm. He gets immediately glimpsed back by Frenzo, and so goes down immediately from this meta morph and this amplified damage. Prugas gets X up. They're focusing him. A tree cast. Goes on Frempo, brings dealing with bugs in the backline. These bugs are just so annoying. Ix Mike's making so much space in the backline. He gets glimmered up, he gets comboed up by Tiny. He gets Frempo with the insane time lapse. Frempo is going to die. No, he doesn't die to the meteor. The EMP comes out. Ix Mike looks like he's running out of mana. Brink, Brink uses his BKB. Kenny's wailing on the towers here. KB looking for an opening. His blink is up. Derp, derp, cross fights Kenny up. He looks like he's gonna go in, he goes in, he hits him with a combo avalanche, he does not kill him, he gets sundered immediately. KV looks like he gets X'd up, the bow's gonna hit his mid before he gets promoted. Ix Mike dies, he drops the tombstone, Derp Dev looks like he's gonna go down as well, and I think that's game, guys. It's only in Boker left, and Kenny no, 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 no. and it's the not rest game of yet. Radiant are still up. You don't Brink's think so? not gonna give up. Watch All this, right. watch this. This is the uh, Rampage and Boker. You've seen YouTube clips, you've seen... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. He killed those creeps. He killed five creeps with that. I'm ready for though. these YouTube clips, bro. Rugos gets effed up. Gets X torrented, dies. He's setting up for the rampage. He, he is setting up for the rampage. He's letting a dying caught out. rampage. Okay. That was the rampage for sure. I was hoping. The GG for gets it. called by Dirt Let's talk about the unsung hero of the game, Frempo. <laughs> Dude, his uh, time lapses in the last part of the fight was his. Absurd. He got insane time lapses off on both the. I think so, I want to say Slaughter. Uh, I expect there because he was going to get killed by Tiny. And yeah. the first one on the Terrorblade who got caught up by the axe call. Uh, Kenny, this game. Pretty interesting way to deal with the axe call, actually. The axe weaver. I mean, it all. I mean, Radiant can easily win this game. It's just that in all the fights before that, Weaver was the first one to die, right? And so, it's kind of hard for um, Radiant to take a fight when you're Weaver dead. He's kind of the majority of the damage whenever TB is not meta and BKB. Very hard for them to take a fight. Agreed. Sorry. Over. Um, so yeah, that that was a good game though. Uh, let me look at the post game. So I think like uh, the lanes, everything went like pretty much how Radiant wanted it. I think. I mean, top lane was rough. I mean, I think the real issue was that the the terribly just had a free lane, right? And then yeah. eventually he just showed up to a fight with his Dragon Lance, Treads, Aquila, and just like killed everyone. And that's when the game was just over.
Yeah. They needed to slow the Terrorblade down this game. Like, if the Terrorblade had, like, one la less item when the Dire was hitting their timing, they might have been able to just take the game, you know, but he was really far ahead. Agreed.